And for your old club, Simon, last night, a club that you still have, I'm, I'm quite sure, a place in your heart for, Indeed. Crystal Palace. Booze at halftime and then booze at full time uh, as Palace lost at home to Bournemouth. And of course, as far as Palace fans are concerned, Bournemouth are the ones who should be fighting for the Premier League lives. Uh, Bournemouth are the ones that Palace should be beating, but not so last night. So what about the booze after 45 minutes and 90 minutes? This was Roy Hodgson on that. The fact is the fans are, have been spoiled here in, in recent times. They, they're used to seeing us do very well at home and get good results. And this year we've not been able to do that. And they've come here today, of course, thinking after our good point against West Ham that we would run all over and blow Bournemouth away. But unfortunately, they're, they're false expectations. I mean, they, is he right? The Palace fans, have they been spoiled? If so, define spoiled. Um... I think uh, Roy's getting more irascible as he gets older. Um, and we've seen that when he came on this show and did us all a favour by talking to the media that he doesn't like to talk to, that probably has generated more wealth in his life than he would have ever had if he <laughs> wasn't in the media. But he, he has a point and he doesn't have a point. Mm. There, you know, P Palace fans could have dreamed. You know, I owned the club for 10 years. Ron owned it for a long period before that. And both of us would have wanted to have kept the Palace in the Premier League for as long as they've currently been there. But that's now what Palace fans perceive to be their entitlement. They've been in the Premier League for 10, 11 years. They want to see their football club kick on. And for Roy to suggest that they've been spoilt because of the fact that once upon a time, 50, 60 years ago, Crystal Palace played in, in Division Three South and Roy grew up in Croydon supporting them and that now that should mean that people have some temperance to bad performances is, I think, ill-judged on his part. You know, the one thing that, that is always said about Selhurst Park and the fans um, is that they are remarkable fans. I, when I was watching the game last night, I thought to myself, that stadium doesn't look full. It looks a long way from full. And one of the things that I've seen over the years, with a degree of envy, I might add, that there have been a constant full capacity, and that's what the Premier League brings. And what I saw yesterday was lots and lots and lots of empty seats. I, I do think that Roy was a lazy choice, not because... He's not a capable manager because that would be ridiculous to say that he isn't. But he came back in last year when the wheels had come off from Vieira for a variety of reasons. Some of it I let him led to believe were the poor coaching resources that he had behind him. And some of them I also was led to believe was his high-handed manner with certain players. All of that brought an end to Vieira. And in came Roy Hodgson and everyone went, hang on a second, what's happened to Roy here? Has he drunk from the fountain of youth? We've got a new a new brand of football being played at Palace, and it might just be because Eze and Zaha and Elise were firing on all cylinders, and he's had very little of those players available this season. And it's also true that there's a, there is an expectation in certain people's minds that when you get teams like Bournemouth coming down to Sellers Park, it's incumbent upon the home side to roll them over. Yeah, yeah. And and, that, and and Roy's got a point there. But I don't think you can actually say to a group of supporters that pay a lot of money to watch a team that they've been spoilt. They've been given something more than they've had before. And there was always this thing that I used to hear from Palace fans, oh, it always happens to Palace. And I used to think, no, it doesn't always happen to Palace. It isn't always happening to us. It happens to every football club, and that's the way that the world goes. I'm sure Sheffield Wednesday, Nottingham Forest fans, and whoever else was out of the Premier League for many, 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 yeah, many, many yeah. years could have had the same argument. Do you I think Palace have been treading water for too long, Simon? Look, I'm, I'm always loathe. I mean, where are they going? Well, I'm always, staying in the Premier League. I'm always loathe to get into a bit. conversation where a previous owner, I hated nodes when he used to do it to me. That wasn't just the only reason, but the, one of the one of the reasons was the constant observation of someone, you know, picking up picking up the mantle and spewing their particular brand of bile as a, few, a previous owner, as sort of some sort of demented ex-wife that has a right to an opinion. And I don't want to be in <laughs> I don't want to be in that camp <laughs> with Palace. But yes, of course, when you when you when you see Palace not really going after spending a lot of money. The fans are going to say you're getting 120, 130 million pounds in every season. The stadium mm. is full. We've heard stories about the stadium being built and rebuilt, and that's never going to happen. Yeah. I know it's never going to happen because I know it can't happen. So and there you go. Then don't call us spoiled because we're not spoiled. Well, I don't think they are spoiled. The onus is like you to do but stuff like, for But us. like all football fans, you they want to see something better. Right. And if they're seeing something worse, you're going to get a now throwing things at him, which is what I've read. 
here that they, someone's phoned something at Roy when you're coming off the pitch. That's a bit strong. Well, apparently it was a glove. So, I mean, it's not going to do a heck of a well, lot of damage. Well, they've phoned down the gauntlet, have they? Yeah. Um, <laughs> look, look I, 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 I think I was that... I hit by a mitten. I think that Palace fans are brilliant fans. I always have done. I thought the away support for Palace would, used to make my heart swell. So they're the, not spoiled? All football fans are spoiled. All football fans are entitled. It's the price on the ticket. I want a better owner. I want more money. I want this player. I want that. Well, they're well, right so, about the owner. But so, yeah, definitely in this instance. Yeah, I, I, I think that's part of the. That's what it is. If you don't have that emotion and that affection and that intensity, you haven't got an ambitious football club. Yes. So you got you got to ride that wave and you got right. to find a way to to make that wave land on the shore the way you want it to, and leaving Roy in charge. And over the years, I've always been very fond of Roy Hodgson. I've always seen him at games when I was there, and he was always somebody I enjoyed passing the time of day with. Yeah, me too. And the last couple of times I've listened to him, I feel like strangling him <laughs> because he's doing people a favour by talking to them. <laughs> well, and that may be how he views the media. Well, that's sure that's, is, Simon. The, that's, that's, your former club, it, Palace, honest, last night, lose 2 0 at home to Bournemouth. To a very much informed side, Bournemouth, that are doing really, really well and putting a few teams to the sword. No, that's true. That is true. But nonetheless, Palace are not where they should be in the eyes of many Palace fans uh, because they've only won 4 and 15 now and they sit 14th in the Premier League. So where are they? Where are they, Palace fans? And are you lot spoiled? Have you been spoiled? Do you feel spoiled? What do you feel this morning? Are you treading water? You might want to let us know. Here's Darren, a big Palace fan. Good morning, Darren. How are you feeling? Um, hi, morning, Jim. Morning, morning, Simon. Morning, um, morning. To be honest, I'm uh, I'm disillusioned. If I'm being honest, I think the f I'm just absolutely fed up with the the football. It's boring. Um, there just doesn't seem to be a structure. Um, we've been promised that we're moving to the next level um, under Parish. Um, we sold Zaha or Zaha left in the summer. We brought in Franza, who was our marquee signing. Um, he's centre on the picture on the boards as you enter Crystal Palace football ground. We've seen him play 15 minutes of football so far. Um, I know Roy's had injuries and, and I feel for him and I feel that he hasn't been financially backed. But sometimes in life, you have to change the way you play. You have to structure and do things differently, try different things. Um, last night we played with five defenders on a football pitch at home to Bournemouth um, and we wonder why we don't create chances, we aren't scoring goals yep. um, I mean if you take the result of United away from home and the lucky goal that we got at the weekend against West Ham due to a mistake you know, we'd be right down there now fighting for our lives um, and for a club that's been in the Premier League for 12 years it's not acceptable and all I hear all the time from all these pundits and Danny Murphy, who's a big Roy fan, and, you know, some of the others, they talk about we've got to be careful what we wish for. Well, I don't think Brighton thought that when they got rid of Chris Hewitt and brought Graham Potter in, you know, and then when Potter left, they brought De in. You know, no one as a Crystal Palace fan is asking us to go and spend £100 million on players. Yeah, we know we yeah. haven't got that. Darren, that is but, a very many good points in there, Darren, as far as I uh, read it. I wish I'd taken that, Simon. There's, there's a fellow who, like you, is invested in the football club, loves his club. Yeah. But is thinking, no, hang on, we shouldn't be in the conversation here. It should be what the players are achieving on the pitch, and they're not doing much at the moment. Well, I think I think if I'm correct in understanding the the analysis, the issue is with the choice of manager, Darren. Yes, yeah, choice of manager and choice of personnel on the pitch. Yeah. Um, it's not working. So why not make changes? Why not try some youngsters? I mean, what did you make unearth... of the back end of last season? I mean, there was a lot of rumours, and, and and I don't tend to pay a lot of attention to rumours that come out of Crystal Palace anymore because my time has been and gone there. But some people that I know talked about the management of Vieira and the challenges and the quality of the coaching staff that were there, and the manner in which Patrick managed, and that brought about an end game that wasn't satisfactory. But Roy came in, and all of a sudden everyone yeah. was raving yeah. about the style of football. So what do you make to that? Yeah, I thought. I, I mean, I thought Vieira had to go. I thought uh, he had lost the dressing room. I think in regards to Roy came back, the football was amazing. And as a Palace fan, I've supported Palace for 35 years. All I want to do is see my team go out there, give effort, play a style of football that gets you off your seat, entertains you. And towards the end of last season, Roy did that. You know, I think we went from having zero shots in four games uh, under Patrick Vieira to then having 30-odd shots in one game under Roy. But for some reason, this season, we've gone back to the old Roy ball. It's negative. I mean, last night, I think we had three shots on target. You know, you're not going to win a game of football if all you're, if all you're achieving is three shots on goal. Uh, I, just, I just don't understand. I mean, we, we unearthed the likes of Wan-Bissaka and uh, Tyrek Mitchell. 
we only unearthed those players because of injuries. Yes. Because we were yeah. forced to throw those players in, not because Roy suddenly saw a talent there. But, you know, we've got youngsters now. We've got youngsters in the under-23s. We've got a, a, a young lad in there called Ola Alamo, Obi, I think his name is. Mm-hmm. He's scored something like 14 goals in... But Darren, it's often the way that necessity is the mother of invention. When I was there, Ryan Routledge or Victor Moses yeah. Or, yeah. Or, or Nathaniel Klein were all thrown in at a yeah. time when managers couldn't go through their default setting, which is players that are established and tried and trusted. And all of a sudden, they yeah. unearth a nugget and everyone looks, thinks how wonderful they are. Yeah. But that's often yeah. the case, though, isn't it, Darren? Well, it can be, but sometimes if it's not working... I mean, we've had four wins since October 2022 at home. At home, yeah. You know, in Gee. 14 months. When you see it you know, like I that, mean, Darren. Yeah. I mean, seriously. I mean, if, if these players like Schlup, you know, and some of these others, Wald, who's passed it now, unfortunately. Move on. You know, if, if these players were good enough, you could, and we were playing football, but still, yeah. like, fair enough. But we're not. No, so, Darren, listen, many good points, and we want to mull over them. Thank you for that. Uh, Martin's a Palace fan. He says the last decent striker we had was Glenn Murray. What's the point of having good strikers and good players, I should say, like Olise and uh, Eze? No one getting into it. If we've got no decent striker on the end of the balls that they're trying to play into him. Louis, big Palace fan. What do you want to say, Louis? If you can keep it brief, but go for it. Hi, gents. Um, sorry, enjoy the show as always. Um, Thanks, Louis. Listening to, listening to Benty and uh, Goldstein the other night uh, on drive, and they were saying, what Sorry about that. And I, could, <laughs> I literally could, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't agree with them more because. I just feel like the club has got a real lack of ambition at the moment. Um, and I think Darren, the last call, I've touched on every, literally saying everything that Palace fans are, are, are saying because there is a lot of dry wood in the, in the squad. Um, from a sentimental point, I love Joel Wards. Um, I think he's, he's been a great servant to the club. However, he's not up to the level anymore. He's not a Premier League player. You've got Nathaniel Klein, I know we've had injuries, Mitchell coming off last night, but Nathaniel Klein, way past it again. I, I go back a few years back when Wan Bissaka first came through. He was a, a, an attacking wide player that made his debut against Tottenham and was filling in at fullback. And he had a man match performance. He was absolutely outstanding. I was at that game, absolutely outstanding. What annoys me the most is, again, like Darren said, we've got a really tough running coming up towards Christmas now. Mm. Christmas has always been a, t- a tricky period for Palace over the years because of the fact of a lack of squad depth um, and obviously the amount of games and the, the, the turnover of games. And the, the fact of the matter is it just, you worry that the, the, the management are not considering utilising yeah. the, the, the youngsters that are okay. coming through. Okay, Louis, some, some good points in that. I'm going to squeeze in James before we hit the break. James, good morning. Palace, what are you doing? Are you treading water? Morning, boys. I mean, I'm surrounded by water on the motorway at the minute. Um, <laughs> so your, your show is, uh, is making it a lot more bearable. But I think good Darren, shit. the first caller, really hit the nail on the head. Some yeah. big words in there. Yeah. Disillusion, negative. Um, I like to somehow, sometimes have an argument with myself when Simon's on the other end. And he doesn't know I am. But I can't help but agree with a lot of Simon's points this morning. Um, I think when Vieira went, it was a very safe appointment bringing Roy back, which steadied the shit. Sometimes you do need that in football. Um, you look at Vieira, he brought the best out of Michael Elise, Eze, you know, Wilf was fine on, on all four cylinders. Uh, Mark Gay as well. I look at it now, and for me, the thing, the real bug there is we've got a £26 million player on the bench scratching his head, waiting to come and influence. He's had two appearances, I believe, all season. You know, we look at the 70th minute yesterday, we're chasing the game, and we're bringing on a central, you know, a holding midfielder. I'm looking around and I'm thinking the creativity just isn't there. I just am starting to lose that little bit of hope, which sure. as Palace fans we all feel so, on to. So, James, 12.30 um, Saturday, you've got Liverpool. What chance do you give yourselves? I mean, as, as funny as you say that historically, and Simon will know over the last couple of years, the big teams we do tend to show up for. You know, we've taken points off Man City. We've taken points off Liverpool in the, you know, over, uh, over the recent years. I'm hoping that that's the little bit of the silver lining we can hang on to. I hope we can bring our A game. I just think Roy, he's managed at the top level now. Is he beyond his sell-by date? He's the oldest manager in the league. He needs to adapt. The best managers, they adapt, they improvise. You know, problems come, challenges arise, they find ways to overcome. OK, I'm James, listen, many good points. Uh, thank you for that. 
Do you know what? A good consensus of opinion there from the, yeah, the supporters. I mean, I mean, it's like most things. When you're fan, when the player, when the team isn't winning and they're not playing well at home and the football isn't great, you're going to look at, at the overall picture. There is a balance between Crystal Palace staying in the Premier League and having achieved something that the club's never achieved, which is 10, 11 years in the top flight. I'll tell you what, when they play, they've got Liverpool, and I think they'll get beat by Liverpool. They've got Man City, and they've got Brighton. Now, if they lose to Brighton uh, and go on a run of losing against Liverpool, Man City and then lose to Brighton. I think there'll be a change. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.